Hi, this is a class for, this is the video of the class that took place on 9-7-23. Um, if you're getting this video, please email the answers of the questions that I pose. <clears throat> and you'll get credit for participation and credit for on time if you hand it in before this Friday. So here we go. We didn't actually get through a lot today, meaning that for each of these questions, we really delved very deeply into them. So our first line, our first line, if the halacha is like me, sorry, if the halacha is like me, let the heavens, let it be proven from heaven. The first question that I thought was asked in class was, um, talk to me about the um about the the progression of miracles that eliezer um that that eliezer goes through first he uses a carob tree then he uses nature in a non-normal nature way meaning instead of the stream running this way it kind of reverses and runs another way he changes, he totally reverses the flow, natural flow of nature. Whereas with a carob tree, maybe you can say, I don't know, maybe a carob tree can move in some kind of way. And then the third one, the walls of the study hall. So no longer are we outside in nature. We're actually in the study hall of the place where the rabbis themselves are studying. And the threat is that that study hall will crush them. And then the third is a, uh, a, a voice from heaven. Why is it, what, what's this progression about? Um, and why do you think it's this way and not the walls first or the, um, or the voice of heaven first? Like what would happen if the voice of heaven? So talk to me about, about that. Question number one, the order of what happens miracle-wise when. And actually, um, question number two is that actually there's something that happens before Eliezer resorts to miracles. What is that? Question number two. And so, so actually the miracles represent a frustration with something that normally happens in a study hall, meaning normally you have a study session. One person says one thing, another person says another thing, but every single thing that Eliezer is saying is being rejected. So in a sense, there's a question of why is it, and this is question number four, or maybe three, I'm not sure, why is it that Eliezer res resorts to miracles and might there have been might he not have resorted to miracles and might the idea that he resorts to miracles be a little bit critical of the pro the intellectual process that was involved beforehand and what was that intellectual process it was basically Eliezer saying I think it's this is why it's correct this is why my my oven is pure this is why my oven is pure and the rabbi is kind of like just basically turning their back not even listening and so in a way there's a little bit of a critique on what needs to happen so that miracles are not resorted to, right? Okay, so, 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 so that is a, that I guess is, is is question number five. I think that was kind of a question. All right. So basically, and then um, the final question is, and this was brought up, I think, by Yoni. He said, he said, wait a second, hasn't heaven proven? Hasn't heaven? been part of every single miracle until now? What is different about this miracle? How does a voice of God show God versus a, you know, a carob tree moving because of God? How is that different then, right? Couldn't it have been like, actually, every single thing that happened so far was, was, was from heaven proven. Why is it in this case that what's different about the voice of God and I guess for you as a, as a kind of imagine yourself, if you were there, what would, why does Eliezer believe that the voice of God talking is more influential or more believable than all of the different things that happened before? That's question number six. All right, let's move on to the next, next one. So first of all, the words bot call, and you should, you need to look that I did update your vocabulary list and on Tuesday we will have a vocabulary uh, vocabulary will be part of our quiz but of course it's open book so if you put these vocabulary words into your red book then you're probably okay um, but so the word bot call is the voice of God that's how we that's what we say the voice of God so here we go so Eliezer says um, if the Holocaust is like me let it be proven 
from heaven. Out came a bot call and said, what is with you all? The halacha is like Eliezer in every instance of a dispute. And let me just right off the bat say, um, say we, we discussed this for a while, but I but I, one of the more interesting comments here was, now, did Eliezer know this from the outset that he was always right? Like God, basically God is saying, the voice of God is saying, Eliezer is always correct. And if Eliezer knew that already, that he would ultimately always be proven correct, what does that do to the study process in general, the debate process in general, when one person knows that they are always correct? If uh, that, That's question number seven. Number eight is we discussed th that this Mishnah is corrected to a Mishnah about to this, this, uh, this piece of Talmud, which is called a sugya, this kind of story, is connected to a Mishnah about Ona'a, specifically Ona'a Bidvarim. Um, and, and we've been talking about what that means, and I think our best definition of that so far was a using, a, basically you having knowledge that someone else doesn't have, either the person themselves that's kind of doing the action or the people around you, and you using that knowledge to create some kind of power differential between the two of you. You either use or you withhold that knowledge, that information, and that creates a, a system of inequality. That's kind of our best case definition of ona'a. And how might this be a case if Eliezer knew that a bot call would eventually come and, and claim that he is correct? Could you call Eliezer being guilty of ona'a? That's question number nine I think we're up to. All right. Now let's look at this bot call. What did the, I mean, so so basically Eliezer says, let me, uh, heaven's going to prove it. This, this voice of God comes out and says, you, Eliezer is always correct. Rabbis, whenever Eliezer is part of the discussion, whatever he says goes, okay? Um, and the next piece basically is, well, I mean, I guess, like, what else, I guess, first of all, my question number 10 would be actually, what else could the, could the bot call have said, right? Well, I mean, so you, you call from heaven, and remember, Eliezer is in a very specific situation. He's trying to prove a very specific point, right? For some reason, the, what could the bot call have said so Eliezer would have emerged victorious? That's question number 10. So really, my question is based upon number ten: is the bot call doesn't say this? The bot call doesn't say in this very specific situation, Rabbi Eliezer is correct. Instead, the bot call says Rabbi Eliezer is always correct. Why? Why? Why is it choosing to do that? Why is it choosing to kind of prop pop prop up Eliezer in every single situation? He's never ever ever wrong. Okay, and that's question number 11. Okay, now let's go to question number 12. Rabbi Yoshua stands up on his feet and he says, Lo bashamayim he. It is not in heaven. Those are words that you need to know. Lo bashamayim he. And we basically, we spent a lot of time asking, what's the, what is not in heaven? What is not, and, and a lot of people said, which I thought was really clever, was Lo bashamayim he. He is she, meaning that whatever they're talking about is not in heaven. It is a feminine word. Now, there is a feminine name for God, Shekhinah. So it could be God. It could be, someone said in class, Torah. Torah is also feminine. It could be Halakha, law, right? So what is it that is lo bashamayim he? Tell me what it is and why. I think that's question 13 at this point, right? And, and, we spend a lot of time saying, who is Rabbi Yoshua talking to when he says this? Who is he pointing at? Is he pointing at Rabbi Eliezer? Is he pointing up to the heavens? Is he pointing to the other rabbis? Is he pointing to himself? What's, who's he pointing to and why? That's gonna, we're going to call that number question number 14. And then, interestingly enough, we have this kind of comment of what do the words lo b'shamayim he mean? Right, which is really interesting. Like, 
what is that like like are there the, it's ambiguous in a sense what it means so what i'd like you to do for question 15 is ask the question what are some possible explanations for what lo bashamaim it is not in heaven could be so try to think of two or th- give me three possible a b and c possible ideas of what lo bashamaim he might actually mean possibilities right because if in order for because someone's going to ask what do these words mean meaning that whatever was above is slightly ambiguous. So I want you to kind of uh, kind of talk to me about that ambiguity and give me three possible things what lo bashmaim he might actually mean. Okay. So now we're up to question number 16. And here we get Rab Yirmiya giving an explanation. Okay. And Rabbi Yirmiya says, it means the Torah was already given at Mount Sinai and we do not listen to a bot call because it was already written in the Torah from Mount Sinai, lean after the majority. What I'd just like you to do for number question number 16 is explain what's happening here. What is this all about? What is Rabbi Yirmiya saying? Why is it that we don't need to listen to God anymore? And if we're not listening to God, I guess this is question number 17. If we're not listening to God, then does that mean that anything I want to say goes? Or are we listening to something else? That's question number 17. And that brings us to really where we are in our story. So um, um, you'll see another assignment coming out for the weekend, probably tomorrow. Best of luck on this. And um, 